Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Talk Hunting. Today I'd like to discuss ticks and tick bite prevention. So, some of you may already know that ticks have become a, a major issue here in Canada and it seems to be getting worse every year that goes by. So, this past year I uh, became uh, quite concerned since I was finding ticks pretty much every time I was outside I'd come back and I'd have a tick on me, especially if I was in the bush. Uh, the fall, this past fall, was uh, it was terrible. Uh, last spring as well, during the turkey hunt, I had ticks constantly. Every time I was sitting down, I'd stand up and we'd have ticks on us. So, that being said, I'd like to discuss a little bit about ticks and bring a little bit of awareness. I know there's all kinds of different YouTube videos out there, a lot more educated people on, on uh, ticks. I, myself, I'm just going to give you what I know. So, uh, here we have it. Uh, it's now March. And some of you are probably thinking, well, why are we talking about ticks in March? Well, um, ticks can be active in March. Uh, it's not very likely, but the, the potential of them being active is there. Anytime the temperature comes anywhere close to the zero mark, or freezing, I should say, um, you got to be aware that ticks can, uh, can be active and could potentially be trying to latch on and, and bite you. So they need to feed, that's how they mature, that's how they breed, and each time they need to move into that next phase, they need to latch onto some kind of vector. That being said, if they attach onto something that ends up with or has Lyme disease and they feed off of it and then come to you for their next phase, well, uh, or get passed on from one generation to the other, uh, I, I think is less likely, but still a potential. Um, that tick could potentially be uh, littered with uh, Lyme disease. So that brings me to my video today. I want to make sure that you guys understand that anytime it approaches zero, they can become active and they're going to try and feed. So that leads me to my next thing. So this past year, I already mentioned, I um, was quite concerned about how many ticks. Did a lot of research because of the, the amount of ticks that were on me or on my, actually on my children or my pets. And uh, that led me to permethrin. So permethrin is a uh, US based product uh, designed I do believe down there and it is quite quite well known uh, down there but here in Canada we we don't have that uh, that that product here for human consumption and the reason is is due to the laws. So the laws haven't allowed for sale of permethrin for human consumption. So Farmers have had permethrin for quite some time and it was used on their uh, cattle, their livestock. Uh, a lot of people use it on their horses for prevention of uh, tick uh, bites. So you can obtain it right now in Canada in a uh, farm, uh, like say a feed and seed place where a farm supply store uh, where you can buy permethrin. That kind of permethrin is for animal use and animal use only. I know people do use it and have used it and continue to use it, but in terms of concentration and the differences, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's safe for us. I don't, I, I have no idea. So what I would like to do is recommend the use of permethrin by buying some out of the US and getting it shipped to you. So the reason you have to do that is because of the laws and the laws haven't allowed for the sale. So you can have it on your person. You're allowed to uh, own it. You're allowed to use it. The issue is, is at the storefront. Stores aren't allowed to give it to us to, uh, to use. So they're not allowed to, to sell it to us for human consumption. And uh, that's just due to the Canadian laws currently. So that being said, you can order it can get it online you can buy it and use it and it's it's an awesome product so what I did is I bought it in uh, the fall and I used it through the deer season worked amazing was having a huge problem with uh, ticks when I initially started into the the uh, deer season and as it progressed into uh, winter obviously snow started to fall and ticks started to disappear because we dropped down below zero so as we were approaching the end of March and into April, the snow is starting to melt. People are starting to go into the bush for, say, uh, maple syrup season is, is pretty much here. Um, we had a little bit of a run, I do believe, there last week when uh, temperatures rose. But uh, the, the biggest uh, run is probably still ahead. And with that, 
People need to be aware that ticks can be out when that temperature gets up to say four and five, six degrees and there's still snow on the ground. Now, there's most likely not as many ticks right now with all the snow, because uh, some of them are probably still buried, still frozen. But uh, nonetheless, if there's say a tick that is close to the surface or exposed ground, uh, or happened to just be up in one of these trees and hadn't made its way down to the ground and was waiting to say attach onto somebody or uh, another animal prior to the snowfall, well, it, as the temperature increases, it has the ability to attach to us and feed. So that's where permethrin comes in. So we need to get online, order some of this permethrin and get it on our clothing. And so a little bit about permethrin. Permethrin uh, is uh, specifically an insecticide. It, uh, it does have some repelling features. The uh, ticks don't like it. Um, you can YouTube a couple other uh, like uh, close up videos where ticks were introduced to permethrin and they went to attach on and then immediately backed off because they, they, don't, they don't like it at all. So in the off chance that you do get online, you buy this and you apply it to your clothing, which I really do hope you do, and uh, a tick does happen to fall onto you with your clothing, spray down with permethrin. It's supposed to stun the tick, the tick should roll off, but that very slight exposure, the toxicity that permethrin has to ticks is, is huge. So for us humans, we're allowed to basically 32 grams permethrin exposure a day. Uh, that would be pretty much the entire bottle that you would purchase. You'd have to pour, basically shower or bathe in it to have any kind of harmful effects. That's kind of the exposure limit that us humans can have with, with permethrin. So with that being said, um, insects such as ticks, their exposure is very, very, very small. So the second it touches you, it's repelled, uh, stunned, and then it falls off and, and dies. That's why I started using permethrin. When I started researching this, I found out permethrin worked amazing. And uh, it, it basically was uh, one of the, the best hyped up things from any of the uh, basically tick sites that I was on. Some of the organizations that, uh, that have been doing a lot of research about ticks, they, they basically said, the best way to do it is permethrin. If, you, if you're if you concerned, apply permethrin, buy permethrin clothing. Well, we can't do that here. So um, you can order the clothing, you can order the product and apply it to your clothing. Most of us can't afford to go out and buy all brand new clothing with just permethrin in it. So uh, buying a bottle and applying it to your clothing is the best option. So turkey hunting is coming up. That season's about to open up in the about a month's time now. And as most of you know, uh, spring is probably one of the worst times um, to be in the bush for ticks. They're coming active, they're trying to feed, they need to move into that next phase of living for them, or they're trying to get ready to breed so that their offspring are ready and, and able to do the same thing. So um, we need to, to prevent that. So ultimately, number one is uh, buying the permethrin, get it on your clothing, spray it on your clothing use some protection because permethrin is uh, it, it is still toxic to us wear some gloves when you apply it get it on your clothing you need to make sure that the clothing is uh, in a in a open area when you're applying it because it does mist it it is becoming airborne so that being said you don't want to be breathing it in so make sure you're in a well ventilated area when you're applying it to your uh, clothing put a very good layer on initially um, no issues with uh, worrying about the water later on. It's good for 60 days. You can wash it six times. So get it, get it on there well. And uh, then you can just slowly add it each time you go out. So this is at this point, some of these are gonna notice, oh, I can smell it. Uh, Thomas, you said to put this on, it was great for hunting. You used it in the fall and, and we're successful at hunting, which I was, I shot a nice little buck. Have many deer come in, they get went downwind, no problem. Here you are, you're spraying it and you go, hmm, I smell something. Well, it, it's there is a smell. Don't worry. If you're into big game hunting, you're a hunter, and now you're applying this because you've watched my video and I've recommended it, and now you're concerned, well, crap, we've got a uh, odorless written all over the bottle, but yet I can smell it. That was my concern too. Relax, give it about an hour, that smell will disappear. I guarantee it to you. I've put permethrin on this backpack right here, applied it, and within 10 minutes, the smell was basically gone. So 
Give yourself some time if you're planning to go hunting and you want to apply it to your clothing. Go ahead and do that. I would do it the night before if you're going hunting or do it a couple days before and give it lots of time to, to air out. They're not going to smell it, I guarantee you. I sprayed it on the night before and went out and shot the deer the next day. So, not an issue, not at all. Um, but really, guys, the, the big thing is to make sure you apply it to the clothing and not to yourself because uh, we just don't want to go down that road. It, uh, Lyme disease sucks. I know cancer sucks, but right now I'm trying to help you prevent Lyme disease and I don't want you to end up with cancer down the road either. So just make sure you put it on your clothing. That way we're no, we know you're, you're good and safe. You can buy stuff inside a, a pet store that's a pretty well similar type thing that you can apply to your animals to prevent the uh, ticks attaching to them as well. And, and which is another method of them to, to getting into your, to your home. I'd like to take the time now to uh, encourage you guys to share this video and get it out there because ticks are, are a huge issue and I think that everybody needs to, um, if you're gonna be outside, you need to have a method to defend yourself against, uh, against these little critters. So click subscribe if you enjoyed the channel and wanna see more if, and click like if you enjoyed the video. But please do me a favor and we need to share this. We need to get it out there. We need to somewhat pressure the government and, and educate people on how they can protect themselves and their children as well as their pets. So do me a favor and share it. We need to get this out there. It needs to be known to people that there is a product that is better than bug spray. Uh, DEET is, it, it does work a little bit, but it's not, it's not great. So do me a favor, click the like, click the subscribe, but please click the share because ticks, ticks are uh, everywhere and they're becoming a big problem and everybody needs to, to hear about this permethrin. So don't forget down below, uh, I'm going to drop a couple of links that I used before with uh, permethrin and you guys can order it there. All right. So uh, if you enjoyed it, don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching Talk Hunting. We'll see you again next time.